spent this every Saturday afternoon, one to three. You know, when you are surrounded by the likes of Obama, <laughs> it's all laughter, humor, and people <laughs> are always getting happy in the studio. Of course, it's the fan favorite segment, the fan zone, where we focus on international football. Several fixtures lined up. Remember, tomorrow is a Super Sunday, Arsenal against the City, then Everton, under the caretaker manager Ferguson up against the Laguna Solskjaer side, Manchester United. But before that, yes, Lingard, he has finally revealed, saying that he, he's been going through a lot, the mother and the brother being kid, and therefore it's been affecting his performance in the pitch. Does that end the public criticism of the England international. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, we have to understand that some of these players, uh, first of all, players are human beings. Yes, and uh, they go through uh, a lot. And they're ro uh, they not robots and they go through a lot. They're emotional human beings. So sometimes we don't have to criticize them uh, a lot. With uh, Thankfully for professional leagues like uh, foreign land, like uh, in Europe, they invest even on, on, on psychologists for, for, for some of these players. Uh, because it's imp it's an important segment uh, of, of 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 a professional sportsman's life, uh, the mental aspect of the game. If you, if you are you are you are distracted and thinking of other things, you're not going to perform. If it's family stuff, if it's personal stuff, you're not going to perform. And therefore, uh, I think Jesse is right to 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 felt hard done by the public criticism. And uh, I think now that he's come out, his his thought maybe was that uh, people will now s stop judging him so much. He's a good player. But sometimes when, when, when things are not going on well, the public will say other things. But he remains a very good player. He had a fantastic Euro tournament uh, at the World Cup where England got eliminated at the semi-final stage. I think featuring playing for the three Lions in all games. Then after then, he's not been getting regular football. And you remember the fan criticism of him, of his Instagram. Yeah. pages and his pictures and his side, side shows. Yeah. I don't know. Now that he's revealed what transpired and the predicament he's been going through that have been affecting his performance on the pitch, should there be sort of, you know, cancelling session? Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, you know, as, as uh, uh, my fellow is saying, these are human beings. Yes. They're not robots. Uh, and when you go to people's uh, social media and human handles. beings have got personal life too exactly so uh, when when maybe you attack uh, these human beings based on their private life or something like that we saw like uh, another player who, who who we saw his anger the other day was granny jacker uh, uh, the former arsenal captain because people used to criticize him and went ahead to even mention his family you know this this is not this is not really acceptable because once you get into a, a human being uh, that way then trust me for him coming back to his expected uh, performance levels will be hard because he'll be still disturbed of of that kind of criticism that is getting out there because sometimes you get criticized by people you don't know where from very far you know he's playing in england gets criticism from africa from south america from you, you get tired and sometimes it needs uh, maybe uh, a counselor to, to, to get uh, such kind of uh, players in order to get their the, their mental uh, strength back uh, so that they can uh, come back stronger to the pitch and perform. Otherwise, if we are going to leave them like that, then it, it really uh, 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 makes their performance go below par and sometimes we may never understand what's happening to them unless they come out uh, as uh, Jesse Lingard and explain what what's, uh, uh, what's, uh, has been happening uh, behind the scenes. Speculation on who will be the next manager for Liverpool is over after Jürgen Klopp extended his contract to 2024. And so is Steven Gerrard, the former <laughs> <laughs> legend at uh, Liverpool, also extending his contract at Celtic yeah. until then. Yeah. Is there something we are not <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I think privy it's, to? It's, it's just a coincidence, a coincidence but yeah. uh, uh, these two clubs, especially Leicester about Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool, the, the fans have fallen in love with this guy. This is a guy who's 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 uh, is now in contention for the first Premier League title in I think over 30 years. Back to back finals. The last the other year they lost to Real Madrid. This year they they beat uh, Tottenham. I mean this is this this man has already built a relationship with beyond the players with the fan base, with the management, with everybody around Liverpool. So it was it was it, I think it was it was uh, they just wanted a continuation. Uh, there were obviously speculations that one of the best managers club was going to go, but now that they've tied him to a long-term deal, 
it's good for the club and it's good for him as well. I think he's basically settled with his family in Liverpool. And that's the same for for, for, for Stevie G at at, at uh Celtic. At, is it Celtic? Yes. At Celtic, yes, because uh no, no, he's not at Celtic. He's at uh, Rangers. Rangers, yeah. Rangers, yes. Yeah, at Rangers because uh, he came after being a youth, I think, at 18 coach at Liverpool. He went direct. He, he made an impact. They saw what he could do even in the the champ. Uh, is it the Europa Cup? Uh, and now they tied him to a long-term deal. It means they have seen something in him as a young manager with quality, and that means he's he's gonna go places with this club. Is Steve G the man uh, said to replace Klopp? At Liverpool in 2024 after his that's, expire of his contract in Scottish that's a League. That's long, long, long way to go. We never know that we may reach that 2024. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but uh, life ni Exactly. But uh, talking of five years from now, I think might be too early for for, for that and uh, that those contract extensions uh, for for both managers uh, to their respective clubs is just a mere coincidence yeah. i don't think it was a calculated move <laughs> for them to sign five years uh, extension but as um, uh, barry is saying uh, you know hagen club has, has has created a relationship a formidable relationship that bromance between exactly. him and players players hugging after every game you know, you know uh, embracing uh, the fans as well and everyone in liverpool actually i cannot even say in liverpool in england because uh we have i enjoy watching his his, his game but fans enjoy watching his game because he's really transformed that uh, liverpool team and we saw he got the final jigsaw when he was trying to 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 uh, to get the best out of the, the the Liverpool side, we saw he brought in Van Dijk, and they were really missing a very very good uh, defender in that team, and they finally got him, and you see the, he's he's performing. First season, all the way to the finals, lost to Real. Second season, lifting the the, the Champions League. Right now, he's it seems that the title might be over in the in the next few weeks if he's going to navigate the team through these busy fixtures of of, of the december holidays mm -hmm. then trust me by january if he's he's uh, clear with those kind of points then i think he might uh, be as well uh, be uh, picking his first premier league trophy and, 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 and what, uh, what the liverpool, liverpool fans want and away from club football other manager who has also extended his contract and further stay is Didier Deschamps who led France to the World Cup victory yeah. in last year. Yeah. Good gesture. Is it yeah. uh, a nice move I for the Le Bleu? Yeah, it's a nice move for the Blue. He's a club, he's a country legend. For He captained the team in the 98 World Cup. Yes, yes. He led them to 2018 World Cup final and won the cup. So, I mean, uh, Didier, I think it's a, they just uh, pay the price. They just... Uh, complimenting him for a good job done uh, but my problem with club food uh, country football is this it's very rare before you meet with your players again uh, so for example <laughs> if you sign five years you're going to see them three <laughs> times a year it's not during like, international assignment uh, yeah, i don't know what you do the rest of the day i don't know if you do scouting <laughs> you're like i i see uh, gareth south getting more yeah he, he league keeps league traversing league. watching uh, his players at club um, level yeah it will be better to have a long-term deal with a club than a, and that's why some <laughs> some some Coaches, they'd rather stay out and wait for a club to come for them rather than go and like one of them Morino. Morino. They cannot coach. <laughs> they cannot be idle. But there is preference. There are those coaches who love, you know, being in charge of national teams I, at the expense I, I, of. I don't think uh, that there are those who prefer um, uh, the, the the national uh, team due to Luis Felipe Scolari. But once the job comes up and you are out, then uh, sometimes you may decide to take it up because. Like Mourinho has put a very, very perfect <laughs> example. <laughs> Mourinho is not a man who is going to go to coach. Portugal, Portugal tried Portugal. reaching him, but he refused. No, he refused. No, no, no. So he's, he's that guy, kind of guy who wants to be involved every week, week yeah. in, week yeah. out, yeah. Uh, uh, coaching and, and all that. And uh, as we've seen, uh, we're saying that the club football seems to be uh, having more The most spice. attractive. Yeah, exactly. Uh, most attra uh, attractive because you have different kind of competitions right. you have three games yeah. a week sometimes yeah <laughs> and for the national team you have to wait uh, like a whole month a whole two months to yeah. see your players back yeah. and you know jailing these kind of players is sometimes a little bit of, uh, of a hard work and that's yeah. why if you see a, a coach with the national side 
performing, always performing, then you would really want to ho get hold of him yeah. the way France have done with this champs because yeah. he has yeah. now understood his players. Yeah. His, and his, the dynamics of national team exactly. football. Exactly. So yeah. I think it's a good move for him and uh, good for the, the French uh, uh, for French football, being a legend, and he has performed, uh, but personally, maybe uh, I may have question marks of, on why he has been uh, dropping Alexander Lacazette, but he has the reasons, and he's performing, so uh, that's where we leave it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but I, understand, I also understand yeah. the concerns by Arsenal fans <laughs> that their player is not <laughs> featuring for the national team and it's only Olivier Giroud <laughs> who gets preferred <laughs> over, over Lacazette and Benzema. Yeah. Anyway, so we're going to speak uh, uh, about doping and you know last week the pronouncement from World and Doping Agency yeah. Yeah. over Russia, you know, they mm. got banned from involvement in all sporting activities, yeah. including Qatar, yeah. 2022 World Cup, and even the next year's Olympics in Tokyo, Japan. Yeah. Is this a, a directive that will also scare the countries who have been trying to practice the same <laughs> silently? I think, I think for since World has existed, this has suffered the biggest and the harshest uh, penalty to any, any, any country. And uh, naturally, it, 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 it evoked a lot of response, especially even from the president of the country, mm -hmm. Putin. Yes, yeah, he, he responded. Because, yeah, because uh, Russia, by the, 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 the uh, I think it's, it, it will be unfair. I don't think everybody uh, that were investigated in Rwanda doped. And I don't know if there is anything called state-sponsored doping, that every sporting discipline, government sponsors it. I think for me, and that's why maybe uh, Wada proposed that, uh, for example, in the Olympics, an athlete goes as an individual and not as a representative of a country. Yes. But everybody in such a, uh, an event like like Olympics wants yeah, to be associated yeah, with the country. The country exactly. You are you are representing a nation, so you're going. Uh, if you go as an individual, you're like an alien, nobody even really gives you much needed attention. So, uh, but it's it's it's. Uh, it's a warning to anybody or any country who wants to dope because four years is a long time. These guys are going to miss the Olympics and they're going to miss the World Cup football, which is really huge, even for, their own, uh, for, for individual sports. And I think participating as an individual only applies to individual sporting disciplines, right? Yeah, like, like athletics. Like, like short put or something. <laughs> yes. yeah, uh, football, they're <laughs> not going to put. Uh, it's really a big, but it's a warning. That's what they're saying. And remember, <laughs> Russia has been in the in the spotlight for a very long time. It's not that it's been being. Uh, the Russian authorities are saying they're being uh, what they're being unfairly targeted. Uh, targeted, but the, it's been a. I think since 2010 they've been. I think it's been a long. What has been on their radar? Yeah, no, no, yes, I, I think uh, it's a. Uh, if I can say this, it's a well-deserved uh, punishment because we've been talking about doping from athletics now. Maybe sometimes football is involved, you know, uh, this is a very, very uh, negative vice in, in, in the sports industry. And we have seen uh, maybe individuals banned, live alone the country now. We have seen individuals banned from their sporting activities because of doping. Uh, and for what to come up uh, with that kind of punishment, trust me, they have done their investigations and they have got their facts right. And this serves as uh, not really as a warning, as a good punishment. And uh, 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 any any other country we, which might be trying to maybe uh, involve itself with that vice should also get a, a, actually an, a tougher penalty uh, as compared to this one. And this, I think, such kind of uh, of punishments should also now go to other vices. For example, racism. Mm -hmm. This is one classic example of what should be happening to racism yeah. uh, in, in the sporting industry. Because if we are not going to curb it with such kind of serious punishments, it won't stop. Yeah. So it's a very well, uh, well deserved uh, punishment and uh, it's a thumbs up to WADA and they should continue investigating such kind of instances and give proper punishments. In Europa League last week, Man United, for the first time, I think they recorded a win of <laughs> four goals <laughs> against TZ Alkamar yeah. and uh, Mason Greenwood scored yeah. a brace yeah, and brace. the English international uh, has received much praise from, yeah. you know, Man United fans. Mm. And now they're even comparing him with Wayne McRooney. I saw Laguna Solskjaer's <laughs> 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 post press, uh, mm. you know, statement mm. saying that uh, 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 Greenwood is growing into something yeah. big as far as football is concerned. Is this 
the pressure that gets piled on these young English internationals yeah. and finally yeah. they get ruined. We uh, saw what happened to yeah. Adam Johnson. Yes, yes. Uh, I think, first of all, the harshest uh, critiquing media is that one of England. The moment they put you at this pedestal <laughs> and then you go down this way, then. you're in trouble. And this really affects even, even the upcoming players. One moment you're performing, one moment you're not. It's because somebody's always scrutinizing you. Yes. And, and this issue of also comparing a young player to somebody who's already established himself, I think it's a bit unfair on them. They need to grow as they, as they grow along. So, for example, Mason Greenwood being compared now to Waza. It's a bit too early. Mm -hmm. Too early. Let the kid just enjoy it. He should be compared to Gabriel Martinelli. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes. yeah, I think, I think as, uh, as my fellow is saying, this kind of pressure really sometimes uh, <laughs> ends up... Uh, they really can break you. Exactly, breaks uh, these kids because it's... it's the it's, expectation is high now. It's, it's so high. It's a high time that we left these kids to play their, their, their football continue developing and maybe when the kid is 20, 20, 22, 23, 24, around there, then now you can start giving comparisons. Because I remember there's a time when uh, United signed Memphis Depay. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, this the is next the, next, Ronaldo. Uh, the next Ronaldo, this is the next David Beckham. Mm -hmm. What happened? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we should stop putting this kind of pressures in, into these uh, into this kind of scenarios. And uh, one guy whom I can't go without mentioning is also uh, the young guy in Ma Martinelli and uh, uh, Saka. Uh, Saka yes. is an English international. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he performed, actually. Uh, he gave that assist and now he's the is the player with the most assists at the, uh, in the Arsenal squad right now and is very, very young. So we should, that's why you have seen uh, 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 Freddy uh, Ludjubak is not putting that a lot a lot of pressure into maybe starting him uh, uh, week in week out. Uh, I, that's why it's giving him time. When you got uh, you get your chance, then play. But if you put that pressure, then the pressure also might b might be done on the manager to at least maybe give him uh, give him more playing time, and this might be uh, prejudicial to to the development of the kids. Mm. So give them time, uh, step by step, and they'd be up there if. Uh, they put in more effort. 3 1 victory against West Ham in midweek, and uh, you know, City also slammed last weekend against United in the Manchester Derby. Now you're meeting on Sunday in what is expected to be a pulsating <laughs> clash. Are you up against the Etihad based side? You know, I they're looking forward to defend the title, though uh, getting uh, you know, separated by Liverpool with some I think, huge uh, point difference. I think it's gonna be a tough game for Arsenal. Uh, going to the Etihad, uh, especially now that City lost last weekend, and uh, Arsenal have not really built that much needed confidence in that squad. But uh, who knows? Uh, we never knew that United are going to. Trust. I saw some, some I saw some <laughs> prayer sessions by Arsenal fans <laughs> being presided over by one of the local comedians. <laughs> I think I think those are just uh, fanatics. Um, uh, uh, that's where I can leave it. But. If Freddy, I, I, I saw last weekend the, the team that he started at West Ham, I think he listens. He listens to, to, to the, the concerns of the supporters exactly. of the team. Because we saw some changes and these changes actually uh, brought in that win because we were trailing uh, by a goal uh, to nil at, at halftime. And I was extremely happy and <laughs> until, and until, broke, until you ruined the party during second half. Yeah, yeah. So I think he's listening because Lacazette has not been uh, on that top form that we really need him to. And Ma Gabriel, the young guy in Gabriel Martinelli is showing us that he can score goals. So he had to give him a start. And he, he exactly did that. And um, starting him uh, alongside uh, Obama Young, who is a goal poacher, he scored. Pepe at least put in uh, a man of the match performance last weekend. And adapting uh, well to dynamics exactly. of EPL after yes, at his least stint slow in French League One. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, he, had, he has had a slow start. That's not uh, something that is not being seen. Everyone is seeing he has had a slow start. Uh, but uh, as time goes by, I think he's, he's picking up his uh, boots and maybe uh, by, by the time the season is getting maybe somewhere three quarter of the season, then I, I think we might be seeing the paper that was in France. Im immediately Marco Silva was fired, then uh, Danny Ferguson mm -hmm. took charge in interim capacity and Everton recorded convincing victory against your side Chelsea Football Club. Was there a sort <laughs> of player mutiny? And I think these players were yeah, just rejecting yeah. deliberately to perform for I Silva. Think, I think there's 
I, I the players just don't want a certain coach. I believe there's something called player power. Mm-hmm. They can decide they want you or they don't want you. <laughs> and uh, that there's a lot of uh, dressing room issues. Mourinho has been a victim yeah, of the yeah, same, yeah, I think, yeah. for a while. So, and I am also. Yeah, yeah, Marco is a mm. great coach, a young, very good coach. But uh, I think it reached a time when he had to go. Now, Duncan Ferguson, by the way, is also a club legend. He played there during the back days. He was a good number nine for, for, for Everton, especially the, the derbies. It will be interesting to see how he'll play against... Uh, United. United, and especially the, 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 what do you call the derby against Liverpool. Liverpool, Massey yeah, side. The Massey side derby. Yes. So it will be interesting because he used to score a lot of goals during those derbies. But uh, we want to see how he performs in a big game again, especially back-to-back against... Uh, uh, Man United, it will be a good game uh, for, for him to test his credentials and now maybe to, 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 to maybe embrace so that the fans embrace him more and, and Ken Wright and uh, the boss to embrace him more. Yeah, City and their contractual row with Pep Guardiola. Mm. Uh, I hear that uh, there is no clause <laughs> in his contract that can limit him to leave the club yeah. at the end of the season. Yeah. Pep, is his tactics getting outdated? If you've noticed, I don't know if, if I don't know if this is some kind of voodoo, but every fourth year of Pep's oh my goodness, yeah, Bayern, that happened to him when he was Bayern, in charge. Even uh, Bayern, Barcelona, Bayern, Bayern, Bayern yeah. and now here at Man City, the, this, I don't know if he always runs out of steam, but f- particularly if I think for this season when he's already seen the gap, there's a time when he said congratulations, Liverpool have won. That's yeah. mind game, though. Yeah, it was mind game, but now I think <laughs> Liverpool has actually won the game. <laughs> has actually won the league and uh, there's something also not happening right with Man City to 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 see Fernandinho play at center back for over 5 6 games it means he has no confidence on his center backs nah and but Laporte is injured Laporte is injured then he's Otamendi and Stones yeah. yes Otamendi is is erratic sometimes he can just cause red cards instead of <laughs> defending so he's never he, he has more faith on a deep lying defender to come and play the role he has a lot of faith on Fernandino and his, 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 his main poacher uh, Sergio Aguero. Aguero is out so it means and with a very heavy schedule in December I don't know you'll have to get guys from 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 the, the, the you know you're trying you're trying to <laughs> insinuate something and putting a smile on Arsenal fans that <laughs> they can defy all odds and beat City tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it, will, it will be tough luck. Uh, but in football, Wolves did beat them yeah. at the eight hand, yes. actually. Yeah. Uh, although currently I can say Wolves is a better side as compared to Arsenal right now. Uh, and that's why I think uh, the, the management, uh, the, the, fra- uh, the likes of Edu and Sanlea are, are organizing a meeting with uh, uh, Nuno Espirito Santo next week to see whether he can come and take the reins <laughs> <laughs> at Arsenal. Someone, I, wrote, I, wrote, I, I saw somewhere, someone had written that, you know, Massimiliano Allegri is attending English classes in order to reject Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good joke. Anyway, a lot of coaches are shortlisted for Arsenal job. They are rumored to be, you know, uh, uh, being tipped to take over uh, Arsenal after departure of Unai Emery. Freddie Lundberg, just in charge, yeah. in interim capacity. I think he wouldn't be confirmed. Mikel Ateta as well. Yeah. And uh, uh, Nunes Pinto of... Yeah. Wolves. But anyway, Carl Angelotta has also been sacked at Napoli. Despite yeah. beating Gang 4 0 that day, he was sacked. As we speak right now, Napoli ninth on the standings. But I think. Uh, is, he, is he coming to English Premier League football? Yeah, Maybe at love, Everton? Yeah, I, I think he would love to come back to the EPL. Yeah. EPL is the best league in the world. Uh, uh, every manager would love to come uh, to the EPL. But as for Allegri, I, I, I read some comments somewhere that. He is not uh, rushing into a job right now until at least uh, in the summer. That's where he can start with the club uh, from the start of the season. Uh, but for Arsenal, the, 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 the managers that are being rumored around the legs of Mikel Ateta, we saw what Pep Guardiola say that, you know, uh, this guy is... is he, he's good. What he it takes good. to be a yeah, full manager exactly. now. And if someone comes for him, I might not be able to stop him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the likes of Nuno, I, I think. What if if something happens? But you, you always have something for Frenchmen. Yes, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. If something happens that Arsenal wins tomorrow against Man City, then trust me, uh, we might be hearing the rumors a little bit more longer because Edu will like to give uh, Freddie uh, some time at least to see. What, but don't you, what, don't what you, don't you think that is that is the mistake this? 
uh, Premier League clubs make. Mm -hmm. You remember when Laguna Solskjaer recorded a string of good performances with United, yes, then he was, was confirmed, yeah. and uh, so is Brendan Rodgers now being tied to a long-term contract at least uh, five years. Yeah. I think it's high time we experiment first we give them yeah. a one-year contract yeah. rather than <laughs> yeah there's, there's, i think i don't know there's a bit of excitement for yeah them. they're hiring these managers are based on few games mm -hmm. and then they get disappointed yes yeah. later on uh th that happened also it's I, I don't know if it really happens with guys with uh, jose he's, he's always sometimes gets into this thing when he performs well then they they give you a long time then they get disappointed the again the first season <laughs> yeah i think they should give you interim somebody i'd advise uh, arsenal management to give freddy maybe a one year interim yeah something like yes arsenal get relegated yeah unless something yeah. Like, because uh, of which it's likely uh, it's it's <laughs> <laughs> likely but uh, trust me if if tomorrow is going to get his game right yeah. and maybe get a draw or maybe win trust me he's going he's gonna get some time at least to, yes. to, 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 to show to showcase what what skills that maybe he he, uh, he might have learned from Emery that he was not using that he can use in the in the team right now. But there is that spirit. I, I, I think that enthusiasm has come back into uh, back into the squad. I hear that we might be missing uh, Pepe tomorrow, but that's not confirmed. Mm. But if we miss him, trust me. Martinelli will be able again to fill that void from that wing and maybe we bring back uh, Lacazette to the main striking role and Obama Young from the other wing and maybe have Ozil starting as a number 10. But a, a, a problem, where we have uh, the biggest problem is now the right back who's going to replace uh, Bellerin if he's going to miss because the last game he, he pulled out, out out of the final session because of a hamstring, actually a few minutes to the start of the game. We had Chambers who is playing there. Uh, I think he might have a lot of problems from those wingers of Man City. Uh, you can't, I cannot play Maitland Lyles at that wing against Manchester City. So this gives Arsenal a very, very big problem. Mm -hmm. What, whom are you going to play at that defense? Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, if you are not going to have good fullbacks, then uh, the, the City uh, wingers are going, uh, the, the likes of Bernardo Silva are going to cause a, a, a lot of problems. But if we get the game right tomorrow and maybe Bellerini is back, then we might we might be able to juggle around and maybe get a draw or a win as we are almost coming to an end of course several fixtures lined up liverpool playing against watford in an early kick off 3:30 pm burnley up against newcastle chelsea playing host to stubborn bournemouth side leicester looking forward to continue with this it's good performance against norwich sheffield united against aston villa then southampton will be playing against relegation threatened west ham and there is a rumor indicating that manuel pellegrini might be getting sacked anytime soon in case they lose yes, to Sorton. Yes. Because as we speak right now, the 18s on the log. Exactly. But anyway, Europa League, several teams have been relegated to Europa League from Champions League, yeah. Inter, Ajax, Ajax. Salzburg. Yeah. Does Man United have any chance of winning this? Why are you saying Man United? <laughs> uh, okay, um, uh, we, we, it remains to be seen. Uh, the, the I think this thing, this, this thing is for Inter to lose. Uh, not really, I can't say so. What Inter failed to qualify in their group. Mm -hmm. Barcelona and Tottenham, I think they qualified. From that group. But uh, remember, it, it all depends uh, what cards you play in, during the knockout stages because yeah. anyone can knock you out. Yeah. Uh, it's not, it's not a, a string of group matches that you're going to play. So uh, let's see how, how the draw pans out, I think, on 16th. Yeah. Yeah, and then we can be able... That's on Monday, I think. And then we, we can be able... Now, we, from there, we can talk because... Maybe Inter might be landing um, someone who, who is a number two but still kick him out or yeah, something like that. So let's wait for the fixtures. There's also Ajax. So we Ajax. 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 Yeah. yeah, Ajax is still there. And Salzburg has been also in good form. Their yeah. striker now being chased after mm. uh, by Actually, Liverpool. It's confirmed. I mean, it's confirmed. He's yeah, already it's confirmed. signed. He's signed a, a contract, uh, but it will be announced uh, during the, the, the January transfer window. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, your parting shots, what is expected? At the weekend, Oscar Amala has already scored Kenya leading against Zanzibar. Okay. The Ulinzi, the military boy, <laughs> doing yes. very well. Uh, I, 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 I see Kenya going through, uh, it met, I don't know, 2-1, my, my prediction. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, we hope the boys uh, continue. It's, it's been a good, consistent performance from uh, what I'd call a second string side. It's actually a, a makeshift, yeah. in my view, makeshift side. So, but so far, they are proving doubt is wrong, including myself. And uh, it's 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 very good, commendable so far. And, uh, and that thing, that that performance is putting guys like Abdallah, Juma, and uh, Oscar and um, Wamalo on the map. 
this performance is at the cup. You're parting short your expectation? <sighs> is Arsenal beating City tomorrow? Can yes. we place a bet? <laughs> yes. On a live TV. <laughs> I think I, I, I think that one will be doing what, that. what's your prediction? What's your prediction then? Uh for that game I see City winning mm -hmm. uh, maybe by a margin of two goals. With whichever the score but a margin of two goals. And then um for today I, I I'm I'm seeing that game of Kenya ending that one nil and we we might be going all the way to the final mm -hmm. and then I'm looking forward to the Kenya game against uh, yeah. Ireland uh, in the evening mm -hmm. and of course uh, as I was saying apart from being an Arsenal fan I'm a Bournemouth fan for today uh, <laughs> <laughs> on loan <laughs> yes on loan uh, I'll be uh, yeah, I will be a, behind Watford against Liverpool <laughs> I don't think they have a chance, <laughs> Zero chance. Zero anything chance. can happen in football I, I, yeah. I don't think so at, the, at Anfield it will be tough yeah. luck for Watford mm. and um, the game um, apart from Liverpool winning today the, the next game I'll be uh, looking forward to is the, that Chelsea game against uh, uh, Bournemouth. I think uh, the legs of Ake will give uh, Lambert uh, a run for his money. So it will be a good game and then maybe later we can watch Southampton West Ham. Thank you gentlemen for being with us this particular afternoon for a fantastic show. It's been real one to three touchline every Saturday. Do join us again next time, same place, same time same day saturday it is my name is max always always a pleasure doing this but let's continue with the conversation on our social media platforms hashtag touchline y254 y254 channel at wasike max until next time see ya god bless have a fantastic weekend enjoy and please don't misbehave